Coming to you from 50 Oliver, this is Easton News, and my name is Joseph Taft. And I'm Kim Pincus. Today is Friday, August 30th. Due to a significant water main break last week and the sudden disruption to the town's water distribution system, the town continues to receive reports of discolored water. Water division staff are flushing areas impacted by the break. If you experience discolored water, please run a cold water tap in your home until the water clears. They suggest using a bathtub faucet as it allows the most water to flow out at once. The water should run clear within 15 to 20 minutes, but may last until more people in your neighborhood run their water to help move the discolored water out of the system. Water faucets aerators should be rinsed off to eliminate any debris buildup. The Town of Easton appreciates your patience as they resolve this issue. Join Holy Cross Church for an informative seminar designed to help individuals over 55 navigate the complexities of Medicare and Medicaid open enrollment. Navigating Medicare and Medicaid, your guide to open enrollment, will take place on Tuesday, September 10th at 10 a.m. The event will take place at 225 Purchase Street in Easton. To register, you can call 508-965-4525. Mockingbird Music's next open mic night will be held September 8th at 6.30 p.m. Mockingbird Music is located at 25 Robert Drive, Southeastern Mass. Those interested can sign up at MockingbirdWeb.com. Friday, September 13th, 5 p.m., the Tricentennial Committee and Shoveltown Brewery will be unveiling the official Easton 300 beer. Yes, join the Tricentennial Committee for this release at the Shoveltown Brewery followed by Trivia Night at 8 p.m. There will be Easton 300 merchandise for sale and a chance to sign up for volunteer opportunities as well. The Old Colony Wise Back to School campaign provides children and families experiencing homelessness with new school supplies, backpacks, and clothes to start the school year off right. The Old Colony Y operates three family shelters for families experiencing homelessness. Their goal is to provide each child living in their shelters with two new school outfits and a new backpack. You can help by donating on their website or by shopping for school supplies from their wish list below. Items purchased online may be shipped to Old Colony YMCA at 320 Main Street, Brockton, Mass, 02301. If you have any questions or would like to see more giving options for Old Colony Y's back to school program, please contact Erica Remy at 508-583-9721, extension 6, or eremy at oldcolonyymca.org. Unity Church of Northeastern's community yard sale will be September 28th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 13 Main Street in Northeastern. This event will happen rain or shine. There are tables available for rent for $25. For more information or to make a reservation to rent a table, you can contact Cheryl at 508-238-7363 or welcome to UCNE at gmail.com. The 40th annual Jack Conway Memorial Golf Tournament for the Homeless will be on Thursday, September 19th at the Easton Country Club. All proceeds go directly to support Father Bills and Mainspring and various homeless charities in Conway County, country. Several types of sponsorship opportunities are also available. Whole sponsorships are 300, half a whole sponsorships are 175. Contact Al, Al Becker for more sponsorship opportunities at abecker at jackconway.com. The Friends of Borderland are proud to be having their second annual car show Saturday, October 12th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. For registration and questions, you can contact the email below. Join the Easton Out of Darkness Community Walk on Sunday, October 6th. These events give people the courage to open up about their own connections to the cause and a platform to create a culture that's smarter about mental health. Friends, family members, neighbors, and coworkers walk side by side, supporting each other and in memory of those we've lost. To register, visit the link below. Sunday, October 20th, get ready for a pickleball tournament that helps fight against domestic violence. Join Hugs from 12 to 4 at the Brown Balone Club. Players will face off against each other in a tournament-style bracket. The cost is $50 per person. You can register by Venmoing at Easton Hugs. The Town of Easton's community engagement and paramedicine programs are offering a joint CPR certification course for residents seeking American Heart Association CPR AED first aid certification. Pre-registration is required and limited to only 20 participants. The event is Thursday, September 19th, and the cost is $60. Follow the link below to sign up. 
Election Day is coming up in Easton, and on September 3rd, the town clerk's office will be available for election-related business only, so please plan accordingly. Their services will resume the following day at 8.30 a.m. The town clerk's office will also be closed Thursday, September 26th for election training, and will also resume the following day at 8.30. Easton's Water Division is helping the town save water by providing free water-saving kits. Kits include a high-efficiency shower head, a water use timer, rain gauge, and more. You can pick up yours at the DPW building at 130 Center Street, but please note that they're limited to one per household and there are only 50 available. After the break, find out who's this week's Pet of the Week. And some exciting events happening at the Ames Free Library, so let's take a look. <music> I'm Jessica Block, Assistant Director at the Ames Free Library. And I'm Hannah Paul, the Youth Services Librarian. If you've driven down Main Street lately, you've noticed the big blue scaffolding around the library. We are getting a new roof. But don't worry, the library is open and fully accessible during construction. The parking lot and main entrance are not affected, nor are the collections and the activities inside. The nip of fall is in the air. Shorter days are approaching and the kids are back to school. If you're navigating the roads of IEPs for your student, check out the IEP 101 presentation on Tuesday, September 3rd at 6.30 p.m. All students can also benefit from BrainFuse, the tutoring and academic support database available on our website. There are new teen groups to check out after school as well. Teen Anime Night meets on the fourth Tuesday of the month to enjoy Japanese snacks and watch episodes of an anime show of your choice. On Friday the 13th, Teens are invited to get ready for spooky season with the first meeting of our new teen movie club. Teens who enjoy creative writing of any genre join our new teen writers program, which meets on the third Thursday of every month. Looking to make a positive difference in what happens at your library? Stop by our teen advisory board on the first Thursday of every month. Teens are also invited to join other teens and adults at some of our monthly programs. Join Quisit Manager Miles for Learn to Play, simple introductions to fun board games for adults and teens ages 12 and above. Throughout the fall, we'll try different games, starting with Sushi Go and Zombie Dice on Thursday, September 12th. Registration is required for these Learn to Play programs. Fireside Tales and Poetry is another adult program where teens are welcome. Write a story or poem based on our prompts or from your own imagination and then share it aloud with the group. This group is open to writers ages 13 and above and meets on the last Wednesday of each month. Adults, if the beginning of school means you're finding more time for yourself, pick up a good book and come by one of our many book clubs. We're rolling out a brand new fantastical fiction book club this month. This group is for fans of the magical, mystical, strange, and paranormal and will meet on the third Wednesday of each month at 6 o'clock p.m. September's selection is Howell's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. The rest of our book clubs continue to meet as usual this month. The AFL Book Club will discuss The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. The Nonfiction Book Club is reading Into Siberia by Gregory J. Wallens. And the Mystery Book Club reads Symphony of Secrets by Brendan Slocum. Titles for all book clubs are available at our circulation desk about a month before each meeting and dates and times can be found online. For all those fans of book clubs or books in general, we have an author visit on Wednesday, September 25th at 6 o'clock p.m. Caroline Elanthus weaves science into her writings, fiction and nonfiction, and will talk to us about her latest book, Bifurcation Events, at this event. Of special interest to seniors, their caregivers, or anyone looking to make their home a safer space, Volunteering for Seniors presents Lighting Solutions for the Aging Eye on Saturday, September 28th at 2 o'clock p.m. For all you crafters out there, Design with Dana resumes in September. This craft program meets once a month. Space is very limited and registration is required. If September's session is full, look out for October's registration soon. There will also be a special presentation on how to collect and care for quilts on Thursday, September 9th at 6.30 p.m. The Library Beaters will continue to meet on the third Monday of the month, and one-on-one -on -one knitting tutorials are available by appointment every Wednesday. 
This fall, we're introducing a whole new series of Monday movie matinees. These movies will be shown on the second and fourth Mondays of each month, excluding holidays, at 1.30 p.m. and are for adults only. Bring a friend to enjoy classic and current movies. We'll provide the popcorn. This month, we're showing The Joy Luck Club and The Great Gatsby. Good Neighbor Day will be recognized across the state on Saturday, September 28th. Join a welcoming community at Tai Chi in the Garden with Vince starting at 9 a.m. or drop by later in the morning for lawn games in the garden with neighbors and community members. Pop inside to sign up for your library card. After all, September is library card sign up month or just get to know your friendly neighborhood librarians. As the kids head back to school this month, we've got a new batch of programs for them to attend. Kids in grades two through six can join us at Quick Draw on the third Tuesday of every month, where we'll play silly drawing games. Independent readers with a dramatic flair are invited to Reader's Theater on the first Tuesday of every month. And independent readers can also register for a 15 minute slot to read to a gentle giant therapy dog on Thursday, September 19th. Check out our website for more details about the new programs coming up, such as Starting Line, our new Crafting and Reading Club for kids in grades one through three, and for upcoming dates and registration information for pint-sized paint and sip for ages two to five. And story times pick back up in the second week of September. Drop in on Tuesday mornings for Wiggle Worms, Wednesday morning for Baby Times, and Thursday mornings for Family Story Time. All story times are held at 10.30 a.m. Families with children of all ages are welcome to join in for pajama story time as well on Wednesday, September 18th at 6.30 p.m. These programs and so many more are available when you visit us at the library at 53 Main Street. We're open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday, and 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday. You can find us 24-7 on our website at amesfreelibrary.org. Saturday, October 12th, from 1 to 3 p.m., join the APCSM for the Mike Walsh Memorial Golf Tournament. Mike Walsh was a compassionate individual with a love for animals. Mike tragically passed away at the age of 31 during a hiking trip in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Despite this loss, his legacy lives on through this tournament, which brings together family, friends, and community members to celebrate his life. Learn more about this event on the APCSM Facebook page. Calling all local businesses, the APCSM's 7th annual Dogtoberfest is just around the corner and they're looking for amazing sponsors to help make this year's event a success. Dogtoberfest is a community event filled with fun games, activities, delicious food, music, dogs, and more. All while raising crucial funds to support the animals at the APCSM. They're offering sponsorship opportunities that can put your business in the spotlight including your logo on event materials, shout outs on their social media pages, and recognition at the event itself. So make sure to contact the APCSM at the link below for more information. The APCSM Paws and Pages program allows youth to read to animals and build confidence in their personal reading. Reading to the animals helps provide the animal comfort while teaching empathy in children. Join the APCSM on the second Sunday of every month at 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. To register, email volunteers at apcsm.org. The APCSM is still in urgent need of wet food for dogs, cats, and kittens. They're also running very low on cat litter, so if you'd like to help support the animals, donations can be brought to the shelter any day between 9 to 6 or donated through the Amazon and Chewy wish lists, which can be found on apcsm.org. Now it's time for the APCSM Pet of the Week. We have some pets that are looking for their forever home, so let's take a look. <laughs> Right now, the APCSM has plenty of adorable, adoptable kittens looking for their forever home. market for a kitten, fill out an animal adoption application on apcsm.org. So let me guess, 
you still can't find the time to watch your favorite ECAT shows when they premiere. Like Easton News, Community Forum, Film Connection. Eden with ECAT, my personal favorite. Well, don't forget, ECAT has a YouTube channel. There, you'll find all our entire backlog of programming. Make sure to hit the notification icon to be alerted when we release new content. Our handle is at EastonCatTV, with TV in capital letters, of course. And just a reminder, starting September 10th, Easton News will be launching new episodes on Tuesdays instead of Fridays. But you can always catch the latest episodes on the YouTube channel and the Essentials channel. Do you know an Easton resident or organization that benefits the community? Do you or someone you know have a special talent or skill set that you would like to show off to your community? ECAT has numerous shows and segments that might be a good fit for you. ECAT has always represented the talent and diversity of the people of Easton, and we want to highlight you. Email us to let us know what you want to see on our channels. We want to hear from you. Do you enjoy watching this show or any other ECAT programming? Well, you know, that doesn't happen without help and support from viewers like you. ECAT is a nonprofit organization and we rely on some help from the viewers. So if you'd like to help, you can submit a small donation on our website, eastoncat.org, to continue the running of ECAT programming. Just go to the main page and scroll down until you see the donation options or the QR. When you donate $15 to ECAT, you will receive your very own cubby with a small donation. Your seven day weather forecast still to come. And the Town of Easton's Health and Community Services held an event for International Overdose Awareness Day. Check it out. Well, hello everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I am Stephanie Kantav. I'm the clinician, uh, the mental health clinician that works for the town of Easton. Chris Lacone, um, patrolman with the town of Easton. I work as a community outreach officer. I work with Stephanie right now, two days a week. Um, every Tuesday and Wednesday, we work together. And kind of our focus is mental health, substance abuse, addiction, some domestic violence, kind of starting to get into that field. But we essentially do follow-ups assist anyone in our community any, any way we can. Yeah, so a lot of our work that we do um, specifically is when anything comes in through fire or police that might have be substance use related, uh, mental health related, a psych emergency, it gets forwarded to us. We then go out and follow up and um, meet with people, see where they're at, see what they might need for resources. Um, and we continuously do that. We continuously, we'll go out as many times as we need to. We just try to, um, Find it together in a way that's a, a different approach. Uh, when most people see fire, uh, police or fire, they're, you know, he's in uniform. Um, we don't do that when we go out. This is kind of how we dress. Uh, when in an unmarked car, we try to have a little different approach of trying to just get people some help. So um, we know lots of treatment providers have the ones out there, and we really just try to meet people with it where they're at, do some harm reduction, provide Narcan, drive them to detox if we need to, to a program, educate their family get their family involved in local services. So um, it's been about a little over a year now. But thank you, Stephanie yeah. and Chris, for all the work that you do. Um, I do a lot of public speaking, and I have to be honest, like this month and this if this type of event is always the most uncomfortable for me um, because I know often the crowd is people that are mourning that have lost people, right, and that are just, are just going through it. So I always, like, pray and try to, like, ask God to clear away all my stuff. Am I crazy? Cause I'm still a crazy person, even though I'm in recovery and left unchecked. My mind can like run down the street and do loop de loops. Um, but the truth is I don't have any magic words. There's nothing I'm going to say that's going to ever heal the broken heart. Uh, I've been doing this a long time and I know people that are still not okay who lost someone a decade ago. Um, but the truth is that that's not my role here today. My role here today is to be hopefully a little um, a message of delivery, message of hope, right? That often people that have lost someone also know others that are still struggling, right? So like while we remember and mourn and pray for those people that we've lost and more importantly, often provide supports to the ones that have left behind to deal with that grief, we also want to extend resources like hey if you know someone else that's struggling there are options available and people do get well so i'll tell you a little bit about my story um, it's very you know a lot of similar echoes to kevin's um, i got sober july 20 uh, july 12 2021 uh, july is a good month to get sober so. um and you know really a lot of those same themes right i i, uh, I grew up in the uk i was born in uh, lisburn northern ireland 
Um, I moved to England when I was around six and then moved to the United States when I was 14. Um, and through that transition, you know, obviously that was sort of a, I guess like a big disturbance in, in how I was growing up, but things like weren't good there. Um, and I really was offered like a beautiful new opportunity to reinvent myself. Come around to the tables, get some resources, and we're here too if anybody has any questions for us. Okay, Great thank job, you. Guys. Let's kick it over to Adam Carrero with your weekly weather forecast. This is your ECAT weekly weather forecast. Friday and Saturday we have sun and clouds both days with temps being in the cool side. Then Sunday rain comes in the morning and clouds in the afternoon. Then the work week is partly cloudy with some days of sun and the humidity stays low so we get to enjoy the start of September. I'm Adam Carrero and this has been your ECAT weekly weather forecast. The Tricentennial Committee is still looking for volunteers to help out in several areas. So if you'd like to help Easton celebrate its 300th birthday, you can email easton300.2025 at gmail.com. Also visit their website at easton300.org. Here's a little sneak peek at the Easton 300 signature events to be held in 2025. There may be some slight changes like start time and location as we get closer to the start of 2025, so make sure to keep checking www easton300.org for the latest updates. Effective through November 1st, Phase 3 water restrictions are in place in Easton. For even-numbered properties, watering your lawn is restricted to Mondays between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. Odd-numbered properties is restricted to Tuesdays between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. These restrictions are needed to comply with the water withdrawal permit and to ensure adequate supply during the construction of the iron and manganese treatment facilities and the rehabilitation of the Bay Road water storage tank. Are you interested in sharing your art with the community and exhibiting your artwork at Easton Town Hall? Well, the Town of Easton and Easton Shoveltown Cultural District recently launched an Artist on Display initiative at the Town Hall. The exhibit will feature a rotating display of artwork for the enjoyment and appreciation of the public and honors the important role that art plays in our community. The Shoveltown Cultural District seeks artists to display original artwork of civic, cultural, educational, and recreational subjects on the first floor of the Town Hall. If you're an artist interested in having your work shown, please complete and send an application form to arodriguez at easton.ma.us. When we come back, find out about an Easton resident who's fulfilling their dreams. And some fun summer activities are coming up that you don't want to miss. This is Easton News. Ah, uh, yeah. This is the life, just relaxing by the beach. What could be better than this? I've got an idea. What? I'd really like to find a forever home. Uh, forever home? Yeah, like Jack Ryan talks about on Easton News. A forever home, all those animals at the APCSM, they get forever homes, why not us? Uh, listen man, I hate to tell you this. Tell me what? Come on, tell me. Look, I can take it. Look at me. Come on, tell me. I can take it. Come on. Uh, we're not real. What? what are you talking about? Of course we're real. Look at us. We're sitting here on the beach, on vacation, being served raw meat, mind you. We're having a great time. How are we not real? No. No, thank you. I'm good. I I've had enough. I've had enough. Thank you. What are you talking about? Of course we're real. Look. It's not that we're not real, we're just not living, breathing animals. You don't even have a mouth, dude. Well, uh, oh yeah? Well, your eyes are just plastic. Uh, right back at you? You've ruined my vacation. I can't believe you've done this. Ugh. I mean, while, while we're at it, why do we need a vacation? It's not like you have a job. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. All right. You know what? I'm out of here. Uh, Cubby, Cubby, wait, wait, wait. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean... Uh... Oh, well, you had to get eventually. 
If you'd like to get your hands on a cubby of your own, scan the QR code on your screen now. Langwater Farm has been having community pizza nights throughout the summer. The last date is September 13th from 4 to 8 p.m. Come grab a delicious slice of pizza and enjoy the beautiful Langwater Farm landscape. An Easton resident is putting on a music festival that you can attend. The Tough Luck Fest will take place at the Brighton Music Hall on September 6th and 7th. Oliver Ames Class of 2020 graduate Asher Thomas put this exciting event together with some friends when they decided there just wasn't enough opportunities for local alternative artists to showcase their music. Friday will consist of punk and emo bands, while Saturday will get much heavier. So there are bars to attend, as well as food options right next door, so get down to Alston to check out some exciting local bands while helping an Easton resident fulfill his dreams. Sunday, September 8th at 2 p.m., join Cheryl Fay Presents Historical Women for this presentation about the life of Queen Elizabeth II. She was a true icon, inspiring people around the world with her strength, courage, resilience, and dedication to a life of service. For 70 years, she remained a constant presence as sovereign, shepherding the people of the UK through both joyful times and darker periods of challenge and uncertainty. An enduring admiration for Queen Elizabeth II united people across the Commonwealth. The presentation is approximately 60 minutes long, followed by a Q&A session. Tickets for this event are $10 a person, Doors open at 1.30 and the presentation begins at 2. Event takes place rain or shine and all children must be accompanied by an adult. For this event, enter at 257 Massapauk Avenue, Northeastern and follow signs to park. The Easton Wings of Hope would like to make Easton residents aware of the Grandparents Raising Grandchildren support group at the Stoughton YMCA. Sessions are free and open to anyone, so if you're interested or have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. If you have any questions, you can call Teresa Tapper at 781-232-9383. Calling our Cultural District partners, the Cultural District team invites you to participate in the End of Summer Music Festival as a vendor or sponsor. Set up an informational booth or tent, offer an activity, volunteer, or be a part in any other way. If you would like to participate or have questions, please reach out to Amy Rodriguez, at arodriguez at easton.ma.us or call 774-273-2997. The Easton Fire Department is having their open house Saturday, September 28th from 11 to 2. Stop by the station at 48 Lothrop Street for food, games, giveaways, and demonstrations that you don't want to miss. The MCO Housing Service will be conducting an affordable housing lottery in Easton. Application for the lottery is October 15th and they will have a public Zoom meeting on September 16th at 6.30. For more information, you can visit mcohousingservice.com. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Joseph Taft, and why don't eggs tell secrets? I'm Kim Pincus. They tend to crack under pressure. This has been Easton News.